So my presentation uh, uh, will basically give you the overview of the, uh, the ministry, its focus, uh, policy direction, uh, some of the key targets for, for, for the government on export and import. Uh, we have uh, highlighted some potential commodities, the commodities of focus for the ministry that we are currently looking at and supporting the players who want to come in and doing a, a, a development on some of these key commodities. I'm highlighting a few slides on our program, some of our signature program that we are currently doing now in support of this uh, commodity that, that we're looking at uh, for, for, for trade. And of course, a little bit of uh, conclusion. The Ministry of Agriculture, our, 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 our target is uh, the ministry itself with its policy are uh, pulled between you know, two extremes, uh, while at the far end we are expected to alleviate poverty in the community because we are 80% uh, subsistence farmers, and we also uh, obligated to, to, for economic recovery, means to facilitate uh, and grow uh, exports. Our production uh, target is that we have to increase the local commodities for import and export commodities across the board by 30%. Uh, our import bills are so high, uh, we are also mandated by government to really look at some of the, the key commodities that are influencing our import bills. At the moment, on some of the key commodities, rice, uh, potatoes, dairy, sheep, and beef, uh, we are looking at uh, uh, a target of 105 million uh, reduction. So the policy for, for, the, for the Ministry of Agriculture is, is shifted from uh, one that is supply and production driven to, to a more focus on exports. Uh, that's the reason the government is, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture is looking at uh, developing some of our potential commodities that can help us in facilitating that. Uh, the, the, the slide just basically shows uh, our export promotion targets. We have, uh, these are the key uh, commodities uh, that we are currently exporting, fresh, process, semi-process, and also value-added. Uh, the government is looking at uh, uh, developing some of these uh, commodities. If you look at the ginger, uh, a good news that we've just received, recently received uh, information from DEF that they are now giving us an open door, I think first country in the world to, in, to export ginger, fresh ginger to Australian market. And root crops. Root crops, the number of root crops we're doing, uh, number one is uh, Ndalo, which is the most uh, important crops that we are exporting to Australia and New Zealand, and also to US. We're doing yams and also cassava. Those are some of the uh, key uh, commodities that we are exporting. Of course, we're working on papaya, pineapples, watermelon, and citrus. As I've said, we're focusing on fresh, value-added, semi-processed uh, in developing these crops. Cover is one of the potential for, for us, but unfortunately, uh, due to the cover ban in the Europe market, uh, cover is uh, uh, kind of moving into a low profile at the moment, but the government is still working on on developing uh, developing cover in the in the EV market. For our import substitution, we're looking at these key commodities: rice. Uh, we are importing a lot of rice, potato, and beef. We have specific programs in the ministry, and also specific facilities that we have to support on this. Uh, on these key commodities. 
also shipping there. We're importing a lot of uh, dairy products uh, from New Zealand. And uh, our target is to reduce uh, those import bills by 2015. On the right uh, column, th those are just basically the maths we given to our decision makers if we need investment on those areas and the reduction targets. Those are basically some of the information that we need to relook re at and consider in doing those uh, investments. We work uh, very closely with our exporters uh, and agro processors. Currently we have uh, uh, 61 uh, 38% of those are doing uh, process, both process and export. 52% just basically doing export, uh, uh, export and 10% uh, processes. Th this is all around the country. Central, they could, we have eight major uh, exporters and we have a number of exporters in the Western Division. By commodities, uh, uh, we processed uh, uh, a lot of ginger, chestnuts, uh, Druka, we have food processes, and some of our key players uh, in the industry was doing uh, processed uh, uh, agro uh, produce. Uh, our frozen, um, most of our exporters are doing uh, frozen dalu, cassava, and, and other uh, vegetables. But this is going back in the uh, Australian New Zealand market. And our major effort for our exporters are on fresh. Uh, we have uh, a number of key uh, family-based uh, exporters who are doing a big in dalo, ginger, papaya, and um, eggplants. Some of the, the exporters that we have now are family-based uh, business who operate uh, dually. In Fiji, they have also uh, partners in, uh, in, in New Zealand and, and Australia. I don't know the relevance of this uh, slide, but uh, this is basically just to give us uh, you know, the key commodities and the production we have. We always say that we have enough uh, production to supply export markets. Uh, so for, for instance, out of the, the 2012 figures, we, we are now like producing 90, 98,000 uh, tons of taro. We're only exporting about 9,000 to 10,000 tons. So a lot of surplus. Uh, uh, floating around, we've uh, uh, we have uh, discussed this number of uh, issues with our key players in the industry to work on uh, value adding. A lot of potential on value adding uh, this uh, agro produce uh, for, for 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 export markets. So for the key identified commodities, Ndalo is uh, on top of the list. Ndalo is uh, the 25 million industry now. Uh, we have uh, a lot of Ndalo. Uh, we have identified some of strategic uh, points of Ndalo cultivation like Tabiuni and Bua areas. These are specifically uh, dedicated areas. Uh, for, for producing Ndalo for the export market. Can I share with you the, the agriculture uh, programs? This is, uh, we call it a demand-driven program uh, because some of these programs really support uh, government initiative, you know, aligning uh, ourselves into the focus on, on the export and import uh, substitution programs. We've uh, identified uh, rural and outer island program. This is because, uh, as I've said, 80% of our producers, uh, they are smallholder producers, subsistence producers scattered all over the 300 islands. In the rural and outer island programs, 
we identify uh, this program to link uh, and support these producers to find their produce uh, to, to the market. Uh, the ROI, as you call it, then, uh, just basically looking at Neta Siri, Tailebu Namoise Serua, Northern Division, and also, especially on the Eastern Division, Koro, Ngau, Ogolau, Kandabu. These are some of the um, uh, strategic cultivation areas for agriculture. We just basically looking at these areas that they produce the volumes that we that we need. So we facilitate. Uh, and assisting and supporting through this program. <laughs> we have an export promotion program. Uh, as I've said, this program just basically supporting uh, uh, production. It, the, the program supports the whole supply chain. Eh? It supports production. It also supports uh, processes, uh, supports exporters, uh, some of the big, uh, small exporters, medium exporters who want uh, support on some of the um, uh, on areas that uh, to facilitate export, the program also uh, uh, support uh, support them. Uh, in port substitution, just basically looking at the uh, the five commodities that I've highlighted earlier, We're looking at rice, beef, sheep, and dairy. We have a special breed uh, sheep. You can't find the ship anywhere else in the world. Is it true? Yes, yes, it's true. It's called the Fiji Fantastic. You should try. This is Fiji Fantastic. We have problem with our dairy. We are struggling with our dairy. Uh, number of issues on dairy. We have uh, issues on pasture, issues on breed, and issues on weather, all sorts. But nevertheless, the government has set aside this uh, support uh, program, basically looking at the 226 registered uh, uh, commercial farmers that supply into our processes. Uh, the program supports them. Now the, the, the government has looked at the potential on dairy in the Western Division. We have a number of uh, uh, projects that are currently going on in the uh, in the Western Division, this program also uh, support uh, them. In comparison, uh, Fiji is struggling with eight liters uh, per cow per day, while New Zealand is doing 31, 30, 31, 35, 35 liters per cow per day. That's a big gap. This is one of our key uh, areas. We call it as a salad bowl. Most of our fruits and vegetables that supply into hotels, also fruits and vegetables that goes out into the export market. This, uh, this is the area that we uh, that comes from. It's in the Western Division in Singatoka. And the government has set aside this program specifically to ensure that the production from this area continues. We support uh, this through infrastructure, roading, drainage, and all sorts of things, just to ensure that uh, Singapore will kept on producing fruits and vegetables that we that we need for the market. In terms of our trade, uh, Australia is nine percent export. Uh, major there is uh, our fresh fruits. We're doing a lot of, uh, uh, of our Fiji water going to the US, no sugar, of course. And these are our major trading partners. <laughs> but we're importing a lot from Australia and New Zealand. So we thank you, kind people, that you will uh, help us to. To match up the other slide. <laughs> May I just highlight uh, these uh, 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 comparison slide between our trading between Australia and New Zealand, 2009-2010. Uh, um, we are uh, 
uh, doing good on exports on prepared foods. Compared to New Zealand. And those are exports, value, and volumes in comparison. <coughs> As I've said earlier, this is our priority commodities. These are some of the farms that are currently in, uh, producing in Fiji. But the gaps, I think this is important for you to know and understand the situation of agriculture in Fiji is quite uh, a challenging uh, industry. Climate change is uh, number one. Uh, this is the effort the ministry is doing, currently doing with our farmers uh, to advise them on pre-disaster uh, preparedness. Uh, focus your investment on the farms on uh, safe areas, but move away from uh, disaster-prone areas. So these are some of the issues that we are, we are facing. At the moment, we're struggling with our papaya because the, I think the last two years flood wiped most of our papaya uh, from the belly, from the cellar bowl. Our production system, this is uh, issue post harvest uh, uh, technology that you're looking at poor handling from the farm. These are some of the efforts that the ministry is currently doing now with the exporters. Our officials are going around to, the, to these commercial farms, uh, teaching the farmers, the laborers, how to deal with post harvest on some of these uh, very fragile commodities. Our famines is also a problem. The urbanization rate is uh, uh, high in Fiji. And of course, the government is working uh, on uh, improving some of the infrastructures. Uh, farmers are scattered all over the, the islands. Uh, port facilities, wharfs, roads, storage system is some of the big issues on agriculture investment. I think this is important that you should know. I've already mentioned that we are small farmers, but we are the small farmers contributing a lot into our, our volumes. Uh, we are they are eighty percent, about twenty percent are, are commercial farmers. Our effort is uh, uh, to entice uh, uh, private hands, private uh, investment. Uh, for, for, the, for this uh, uh, agriculture development. We know it's uh, very risky, not most are interested uh, because of the risk in investment. Uh, but some of the players are really doing it uh, wisely and smartly, and they really seeing the return of the investment. <coughs> We have uh, mentioned this, that uh, uh, we're working with our people and it must be balanced, our approach. Uh, according to our data, our figures that we have uh, surplus on fresh produce, uh, enough for, for secure of our food, our sustenance, at the same time, uh, enough surplus on our fresh for for valuating and processing and same process. And some of our Indo uh, Fijian family doing business, they are really doing great on, on this uh, on this value adding on, on our fresh uh, produce. That's thank you. <laughs>